Welcome back to my pile of shame where I, a painting noob and videographer, try and learn how to paint exclusively using content on the internet. This is part two of my Road to Painting a Wattsmith series. You can watch part one just up here and in that episode I painted up four marines from four different creators to try and get to grips with how to paint Iron Warriors. In this episode, I'm gonna take those four Marines and try and smush them together into a scheme that I want to paint my Warp Smith with. I also wanna try and figure out the best way to paint Hazard Stripes too. I'm also going to be trying out Microset and Sol for transfers and Dirty Down Rust and Verdigris for some extra weathering. Everyone's raving about these things online, so like the impressionable little boy I am, why not? Anyway, I'm getting carried away. Build montage. I've sprayed these either lead belcher or black and in a variety of sub-assemblies, some with weapons separate, backpack separate or everything everywhere. I want to try and figure out which way I like the best because, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. And for those of you that have watched part one, you might remember I had a bit of a nightmare with Green Stuff World chrome paint. None of that this time, got the real deal. So I started from black and I dry brushed lead belcher over the top. I really like the trim of Pete the Wargamer's Marine, so I wanted to replicate that, but with the armor from Juan Hidalgo's tutorial with the shading and colors from Duncan's tutorial. Still with me? Good. After dry brushing the model and preserving it on the trim, I filled in the panels with the belcher by hand, which took ages. I really don't feel like doing that again. Using Chrome Model Air was awesome, but I definitely overloaded my brush once or twice and gave this guy a really bright arse. Lesson learned for next time, we'll be removing some of the excess off the brush before going in for the highlights. Taking on the recommendations from all of the comments here on YouTube, on TikTok and Instagram, I bought some two millimeter tape to try and paint some perfectly straight hazard lines. I had some issues trying to get them round the shoulder pad and over the trim. See, some paint got underneath the tape, but it was really easy to clean up. And for the most part, the results were great. But are they worth the faff involved with putting tape on your Marines? More on that in a bit. I didn't base any of my miniatures last time, so for this one, I'm following Duncan Rose's Martian Bases tutorial. No particular reason, I just think Martian Bases are really cool. I also followed the quick tutorial from Maverick Paints over on his Instagram reels for the transfers. Using the combination of Microset, Microsol, they do look great. You do get that painted on look. This was my first attempt and I think it went pretty well. The only thing I think I need to work on is the grey highlight on the black shoulder pad. It's definitely a bit fat here and you can see that the transfer sort of poked over it a little bit. So more attention to thinning that down next time. The rust on this model turns out pretty good, but I'm not sure I'm a fan of the verdigris. More practice, perhaps. 
Overall, I'm really happy with this iteration of my Iron Warrior, though something I definitely got wrong was the shade color on the hazard stripes. All of the tutorials rattling around in my brain, I mixed up, I think, Wildwood and Flayed One Flesh. I used Wildwood on this one and the results aren't great, as you can see. I couldn't really glaze it particularly well and as it's thinned down, it started to separate and some parts look like they've dried slightly green. I tried to eliminate it by glazing up with, with yellow, but it, 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 it just hasn't really worked very well. well. I've covered it up on the leg with some stippling and dry brushing of the dust from the base, but on the shoulder, it's particularly noticeable. Something else that I chose to do that didn't work in my favor was highlighting the trim gold. Stupidly, it does cover up all of my dry brushing work that I'd done earlier, which was exactly the whole point of doing the trim like this. So that was dumb. I want to paint the trim last, so maybe next time I can simulate a dry brush after painting the armor. Who knows, we'll, we'll see what happens. With this guy out of the way, I am absolutely set on the silver armor and the colors that I've used to shade it, but I want to decide now on the trim and the best way to paint the hazard stripes. A few people have suggested using a pencil to make guidelines on the yellow. And as you can see here, the results weren't completely perfect, but they're way less faff than using the tape, which I definitely feel like I struggled with. And as I'm going to be weathering these stripes and cutting into them, I did find that as I painted over them with the Mechanica Standard Grey and then the Black Templar, I could just cut into them to straighten them up. And I think the results afterwards look fantastic. I use the word fantastic rather loosely. Uh, by my standards, I was pleasantly surprised. By your standards, which are probably higher than mine with all of that fantastic painting experience you have. And then I think this one was a TikTok special and somebody recommended paint markers, or in this case, a Gundam marker. I was pretty apprehensive about using these in case they just sort of like spread everywhere over the model and were really messy, but it did turn out all right. A little tricky to get into some of the hard to reach places and there were some nib marks visible but they weren't too bad in a pinch i think these would be absolutely incredible for speed painting hazard stripes in no time at all but they're not quite the look that i'm going for with the finish as it was i was covering it up with black templar anyway so i think it's going to be pencil for the win and sticking to the hazard stripe method from Juan Hidalgo. I carried on with the hazard stripes and I used some of the flayed one flesh and that was definitely the right choice to shade down and just make that yellow a little bit more orange in the shadows. So now let's crack on with the trim. After the success of using Chrome Model Air, for the most part, I bought some gunmetal grey and not really learning anything, apparently completely Brother. f***ed it all up. To add insult to injury, I spilled a pot of contrast everywhere. Heresy for the Emperor! Burn them all! Deviant! I was trying to simulate using a dry brush here, trying to make small marks on the trim, but overloading my brush, just smudging it everywhere. When the contrast goes over the top, it just kind of looks like budget tiger stripes. I did a horrific job and this was a complete waste of time. Everything about this marine, unfortunately, just kind of didn't work. So, off to the stripping pile for him. I did, however, find better results with Balthazar Gold. Shading it down with Basilicon Grey, I then highlighted it back up with gold, which I think might have been slightly too bright, but I'll address that later on. For now, I'm just gonna shut up and crack on with painting this guy.
so here we have it, my completed marine with most of my learnings from everything I painted before it. I tried the verdigris again and I'm not sure I could make it work. It kind of just looks like a blue blob and lacks that variation that I managed to get in the rust. I'm trying to use stippling techniques for these. Um, if, if anybody has used the verdigris and found it and found a way to make it work, uh, please let me know because I am not very good and I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, happy with everything else. I think it's right at the limit of what I can paint, having put all of the practice in for it previously. Perhaps I think I prefer the base from the first marine, the bigger cracks. I probably skimped on the uh, iron earth and put too much iron crust on this time, maybe. I think the rust looks cool, shading of the hazards, happy with everything. I feel like before I finish this video and settle on a final scheme for the warpsmith, I just want to address the highlight on the trim. As far as sub-assemblies go, for what I'm trying to do and paint something that is, is at the limit of my ability, a full sub-assembly with all the parts disassembled, I think I'm really going to struggle with where to put the highlights, where to put the shading. So something like this, which is just in a few parts, has done well. I wish with this guy that I'd taken the head off, so body and backpack as one, arms and weapons as the other, I think that seemed to work okay. I haven't glued the arms on this guy as putting them on, I didn't want to smear glue everywhere, so I guess I've just got a multi-pose model now. Cheap man's magnetization. I know I've assembled more marines to paint, but I think I'm pretty much there. I just want to look at the trim. I used the gunmetal to base a spare miniature and shaded it down with basilicon and grey like I've decided on. And then on separate parts of the model I put onto the trim Nasdrag yellow, snake bike leather, bronze from Pro Acryl and then Balthazar gold. Being able to look at the colours together was actually really helpful and I think I am fully in the Balthazar gold camp here. Something about that warm darker gold colour does just do it for me over the contrast paints and over the bronze. So separately I painted up two shoulder pads, shaded them, I highlighted one just with Balthazar gold again and then another with a Balthazar and gold mix. I think I'm leaning towards the darker trim, I put a couple of spot highlights on it as well so there we go. And that is this video done. Firstly I want to say a huge thank you to the four creators whose tutorials I followed in the last episode which gave me the inspiration to start smushing them together and make this paint scheme. I'm not going to take credit for it, it's all their hard work and skill and I'm just sort of taking little bits of it and smushing it together like a child. Pete the Wargamer, The Painting Coach, Duncan Rhodes and Juan Hidalgo. Go and subscribe to them, I'm sure you already are if you're watching this but they're all great and their work is fantastic. And an equally large thank you to you. Uh, thank you for watching. And especially if you watched the first episode, uh, there was loads of nice comments on there and suggestions of things that I should do. I haven't quite been able to delve quite as deep into this episode because my work and life have been mega busy. So I have had to flake out on some, uh, some bets. Someone suggested that I should try and paint all the trim as a hazard stripe, which I thought for a laugh could be quite funny, but alas, I do not have the time, I'm very sorry. Anyway, thank you for watching, thank you for following me along on this silly little journey, and hopefully I'll see you in part three, where I begin to paint my warp smith. See you around. Oh, wait.